Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everybody. We are today talking about leadership, specifically adaptive leadership. And this applies to pretty much all of us. You could be C-suite CEO of a major company. You could be a small business owner and you're leading a team of a few, or you could be a solo entrepreneur leading yourself. We all <laughs> need to look at this and how it aligns with our life. And he is somebody that pilots a lot of people when it comes to leadership as the owner and CEO of Cool Persistence Coaching, LLC. Martial Dumlau is back with us. Welcome, Marsh. How you doing? All right, Steve. It's always great to see you again, you know, out there in Long Island. So, you know, just it's good to see you. I'm doing great out here in Colorado. Ah, uh, fantastic. And yeah, we've we've shared before that you are originally from Long Island. So yeah, yeah it's the, the home connection is going on right the here. Home for the connection, moment. connect what high school, Vets Highway, all those things, the airport diner, all the different pizza stores that are still there, right? <laughs> it's amazing how there are connections in our lives. Like we just got connected somehow. Yeah. Um, not because of Long Island, but what you just mentioned. My office, this studio, is on Vets Highway. The airport diner is right up the street. They have the yeah. best chef salad ever. That's right. <laughs> it's like so weird. How, you know what? It's like uh, Kevin Bacon, six degrees of separation. That's right. I I feel if we look deep, we're all there's there's a connection within all of us. I I truly oh, right, believe man. it. Oh, right? when you were DJing at WBLI, all those things, yeah. So. I, I used to listen to that radio station when I was a kid, uh, growing through. Yeah. When we were kids. When, when we, we were, were kids. <laughs> Actually, I started there when I was a kid. I wasn't even, I was 17, 17 yeah, and a half go. when I started See? that. So adaptive leadership, how do we define that? Oh, so this is great. Um, so there are a lot of models out there. One of them, you know, uh, Michael Watkins talks about it in his book, The First 90 Days. He talks about the STARS framework. And then you have others who wrote books on situational leadership and things like that. I tend to look at uh, any one, right? So the STARS model kind of uh, is very cool because one, it looks at whether you're in a startup phase, S, T, if you're a turnaround phase, if you're in accelerated growth, A, right? If you're in realignment or if you're in sustainment, uh, pretty much following that S curve that we normally look and studied in business school and things. Hmm. Can we go over the star model, what that is, what that, uh, I'm assuming that star is an acronym? Sure, right. Startup, turnaround, accelerated growth, realignment, and sustainment. So depending on where you're at, whether, let's say, and you mentioned it, whether you're the uh, task lead at a certain company, and next thing you know, you're just rolling out this new widget or things or campaign. Well, that's like a startup. And mm. so you have different challenges there. So, you know, you're, you may not have the resources, you may have, you may not have the skill sets or, you know, for the, for your team, all those things. And, and, and so then you have to apply different leadership skills there and then take advantage of the opportunities that are involved in a startup where you have, you know, strong foundations, energized environment, people who are just upbeat and willing to go, you know, feel this product, right? That's a startup. Uh, when you do turnaround, though, turnaround is, is challenging because that's the time when companies lost sight of their vision and they're on a downturn. So you have employees that are demoralized. Uh, you know, they don't even know what they're doing. Right. So those are the challenges and the opportunities. And sometimes you may have to go back to your core function of your company, which means you may have to cut a lot of people to get back to their core function. That's the turnaround. That's like the problem fixer. You know, you send somebody in, turn around the whole company real quick. And Would you, you say to... while we're on the, the the turnaround? Yeah. And I'm trying to apply this to every situation or as many as possible. Would you say sure. the turnaround is the the reality check? Yes, the turnaround is reality check. Uh, even realignment. So turnaround and realignment are fairly close. You know, different again, different skill sets, different ways of approaching the strategy. But really, when you realign, uh, chances are that you've gone away from your mission and values of how the company started in the first place, or mm. why are you even working there in the first place, right? So, you know, you decided there could be a misalignment. Let's say you're a fitness person, right? And you just got promoted to become VP, but the VP is for a soda company. Yeah, you know, so mm. 
So, so then there are challenges there, right? So, uh, you know, and I, that's just, uh, you know, I put that scenario out, that sure. uh, fictitious scenario, but they're not aligned. And so you may be unhappy. You took that VP job. It's a great, you know, promotion thing. Uh, the salary's there, all the opportunities there, but then your values, are they aligned with the company, right? So now there has to be some realignment. Is it, is it almost the, the realization of what, what's our purpose? You know, just get, getting back to the basics as you go through the uh, the STARS program. Yes. Uh, you know, we talked about this uh, two weeks ago, actually, right? What are your skill sets and and what is it that you're, you were hired there to do? And, and then your purpose there, right? Are you to really turn around the company? Are you the one known to be the fixer, right? Mm. And so then you gravitate toward those uh, problem sets and, and scenarios where, yeah, that's exciting for you because that is who you are. You love to fix things, right? There are others who are just in sustainment, right? So you have a company that's right there on growth. They're doing really good and they just want to sustain the momentum. And you're very good at doing that. Hmm. Right. I, you, you think I'm kidding, but I'm writing notes. I'm taking notes. I feel like I'm in class, not even kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Cause I want to share this with others. Very right. serious. Yeah. Uh, the A in STARS model. What's that? Accelerated sample? growth. Uh, okay. Accelerated growth. You manage rapid expansion, cultural integration. So now all of a sudden, let's say you are, um, and we just talked about this in the uh, Filipino chamber that I'm part of, right? Uh, you have a, a store owner who is just local. Next thing you know, they're branched out internationally. Hmm. Right now, what do you do? Now you have, you know, you have the internet, you have all these things, you're marketing, now you're shipping your product, not here within the US, but now it's overseas. So now you're growing. And are you ready? You have you set those conditions in place in your company to go ahead and take advantage of that accelerated growth and keep that momentum wow. going? So again, a different set of uh, leadership skills, a different set of, uh, of communication, clarity, the competency level, you know, and now you're dealing in trade agreements. Maybe you're working with a freight forwarder, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a great problem or challenge to have. Let's say you've accelerated and your product has gone worldwide. You started right. making widgets in your garage and in a very short period of time, now widgets are everywhere. That's right. You, what do you do? So this That's is right. all part so, of it. That's right. So now you have, you know, a supply chain, you have the logistics, all those things now start coming into play mm. when before you were just working it, like to your point, it started from your garage and idea there and you've been doing really good in your community, but now everybody wants it. You know, I just, uh, for example, I was talking to a haberdasher, um, Steve Periani, he, he has bespoke clothing and I was getting some suits made, right? And he started out at 17 and next thing you know, he goes, I only said I was only gonna work 50 mile radius here in Colorado. But now I have people coming from the whole state of Colorado. I have people coming from international. They're calling me up wanting to get fitted for suits. So now I have to, you know, and he has, uh, now he has places where they, you know, they make the suits, whether it's in Thailand, India, all those places, you know, so he has expanded. Wow. I, I feel the energy and excitement from that. Yes. I really do. It's like, wow, good for, good for him. That's like, it's so, that's exciting. Right. Now you, know, you have to sustain that. Right. And so then right. now that now all of a sudden you may need a sales force. You know, there is this equation that I uh, that uh, it's it's a, a generic equation. Most of the sales folks know this. It's called sales velocity, where you have your, you know, your your leads, your average average uh, sale price, your conversion rate divided by your life cycle to close. Well, even if you use that and you find out that, you know, you're not hitting, you have a lot of leads. Your conversion rate, that your life cycle of close is so long, it may mean that, hey, I may need to hire people because you are growing. And that's a good thing. What if, and I'm gonna I'm press the pause button here in the stars model. Mm -hmm. Let's say you've accelerated mm -hmm. and this is great. I don't want to mess this up. Right. And now you start to lose a little bit of confidence. You know, if it, you, you know, look around, you're like, we're, we're not ready for this. We have, you know, how do we do this? How do you oh, get over the, I call it the speed bump, never a mountain. It's a speed right. bump of self-doubt 
and and concern that whether we can pull this off. What an opportunity! So even in the gentleman you mentioned about the suits, mm -hmm. it's everywhere now. That's right. We don't want to take steps back. How do you stay the course, but also stay focused but confident? So you know that's a kind of interesting because when you start to have anxiety. And anxiety is something that's in a future. It hasn't really happened. You know, you're always looking at this thing in the future. But the thing is, that thing that you're probably worried about, it's probably not going to happen. I say it all the time. And and I, I live by it. 90 to 93% of the things that we worry about never transpire. You are wasting time, wasting energy. But we're programmed that way. And right. I think it's, I, I, I truly believe it's evolutionary that, yeah. We worry about those things to protect ourselves. Like, you know, back yeah. to the cave person time where, sure. you know, you had to worry about the, I think I hear an animal, you know, yeah. it could be a pterodactyl. Got to be, right. you know, what if it is? What if it swoops in mm -hmm. to protect? I think that's why that's there. Right. So one of the first things to, uh, to combat anxiety is fear is still a good thing. Fear is still good. I mean, when sure. you're fearful, you know, you're fearful of the, the crossing vets highway. Well, yeah, you're not just going to go hard charge in there. You're going to stop. You're going to freeze. You're going to look and say it's clear. Then you're going to go. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the fear. The anxiety part is the one that you're alluding to. We're saying, you know, you have self-doubt. What if, what if, what if? And then it stops you and then you're not moving forward. So one of the best ways to do it is to take that first step forward is to just go ahead and take it forward. Now, when you do that, there are certain frameworks, again, tools that we can imply, uh, uh, apply. Like for example, the 10th man concept, I call it, or we call it red teaming. 10th uh, man is a uh, concept where uh, it uh, actually mitigates groupthink. Oh yeah, you know, so you get nine people in your staff, let's say says, yeah, that's a great idea, that's a great idea. You assign, specifically assign a 10th man to refute the good idea. And huh. when you, yes. And so what happens, it's, it's, and so what happens is that you tend to what we call in the military red team it, you start bringing out the risks, identifying the top risks, and then you can approach each one, you know, individually as a group. But now you have something there that say, okay, you know what, this is not so bad. Let's just move forward one step at a time, put your triggers in place so that you know that you're moving forward and that you can say, okay, let's reassess at this point. Oh, I love that. I want to make sure I heard that totally clear. So you have an idea concept mm -hmm. and then we call it the, the, the 10th man concept in, in this example, everybody's on board. What a great idea. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's great. You know, we're going to make these widgets. They're going to be unbelievable. We're going to go worldwide right. out of your, your group. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be 10 people. Let's say you only have yeah. six in your organization, right. whatever it might be, the sixth person you assign that task, even though they're on board. Fantastic idea. Right. No, you you are now chosen to debunk all of it and look at it in maybe a, a negative frame. Right. Yeah, negative. Either negative or to refute it, saying, okay, well, yeah, that's that's a great idea. But uh, let's look at this, right? Uh do we have the supply? Do we have the logistics? We don't have the logistics uh, capacity to even meet this. How are we going to deliver these things out to these customers? And so now when you start to refute the good idea, right, add those things saying, well, maybe it's not so good. The thing is, now you're starting to actually identify risks. And say, oh, you know, those are just challenges. We can overcome those. And now, but now it's written down because now it's not groupthink, right? Everybody yeah. says, yes, 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 yes. And then we're all on board and we leave. The thing about it is now you've added some, uh, I would say, uh, another set of awareness, another perspective to say, mm. okay, got it. All right. Let, that's real important. We we didn't think about our customer, did we? All right. Well, then let's let's uh, bring, you know, let's look at that phase. Mm -hmm. Now everybody's there. So it's a purposeful, not, sure. right? Not naysaying, just like, okay, well, this person's always naysaying. No, when you say, hey, you know, we have a strategic planning session. And you know what, Marsh, you're in charge now. You're going to be my 10th man. Uh, okay, what's a 10th man? Whatever good idea happens, I want you to refute it. Refute okay. it. Yeah, this is, the, this is <laughs> it's almost like the voice of reason because we're all on a high of the idea. That was great. Yeah. But we need to be realistic and see if there are any, any holes in the plan that we may have missed. 
do you uh and we're going to get back to the the stars model in just a second sure. uh have you ever heard of a cpr uh cpr meaning the medical cpr no 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 <laughs> uh, and i just learned says, it yeah yeah, go ahead. yeah when you google it that's all that comes up okay, uh yeah. content purpose oh results. yes nice yeah. nice just started working on those side note I joined a, a men's group and it's all about leadership and community service. Mm -hmm. And I am totally going to share this with them because this is what we talk about. The CPR, that's where that came up. It, it's oh, a light. And okay. everything we do is connected to a CPR. Even your function, like in my um, uh, tribe at the moment, I'm, uh -huh. a, I'm a scribe. And my job is to take notes and uh, provide that information with everybody. I'm going to write uh, this down. Yeah. So I actually had to do a CPR on it. And if you Google it, uh, I could even send you the link um, you. where it's 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 you could even do a CPR on your life and look at yeah. your life from what would be the ending on back and see what your purpose is, what your results are, the content that was involved in it. Uh, it's a cool exercise. It really makes you think. And it, and it doesn't have to be belabored like as a scribe. My CPR was. I uh, probably two, four, six, six, seven sentences, but, but every word counts and to get the point across. Uh, nice. So this kind of, powerful. Uh, it, it is, and but, but is everything we're talking about here, the 10th man, what a great idea. Like let's, and I don't want to be negative, but it's, it's yeah. look at refute it. Let's look at if there's any holes in the, in the situation. So remember that movie world war Z vaguely yes vaguely okay so you know brad pitt as the zombies and everything else actually forbes wrote about this two years years back as well and we in the military we call it red teaming hmm. but when they went in the movie um actually brad pitt says well here in israel he says you know how did you guys put the strategy in place and things like that and then one of the idf strategists said we use the 10th man wow and they go wow. whoa what's a 10th man and so in the military, we call that red teaming, right? So why do they, why is it, why did it get that lab, label red teaming? Uh, red team. Well, you have, uh, you have the uh, green or the, you know, blue and okay. the red, right? So you have the, the, the guys who guys and gals who are going forward and you have the defenders or the enemy, right? So got you it. role play, right? So this is the role playing. The 10th man is really a role play in the project management world. Uh, we call that pre-mortems. And a pre-mortem is, okay, we're going to start this project. What if the project failed? Well, we haven't started. Yeah, but what? let's visualize that the project failed. What were those things of why it failed? So you do a pre-mortem, not a post-mortem. And then say, oh, okay. So, well, maybe mm -hmm. the work breakdown structure, maybe we didn't have enough detail there. Maybe we didn't have enough money here. We didn't focus here. But now you start to add, a, you start to add another set of awareness, things to just take a look at. And and again, the tenth man there is really to avoid groupthink. Gotcha. I wanted to uh, briefly share with you. We're talking about now, and I just mm -hmm. started a book. It's been around for a, a while, like mm -hmm. twenty years. Have you ever heard of the book, The Power of Now? Uh no. I'm gonna write that down now too. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of his name. Tolle, T O L L E, is the author. Uh, I can't think of his first name, but I started it over the weekend. I'm only maybe you know 15 pages into it, um, mm -hmm. but it really speaks about what we're talking about in in living in in the now. Mm -hmm. All right, back to the stars model. Sure. Accelerated is the A. Right. What's what's the R? R realignment. So mm. similar, close to turnaround, right? The realignment is, uh, you know, you you're looking at the economic and the macroeconomics of your environment. And now you may have to realign certain things. Hmm. Right? Would would you say that the the T in stars, the turnaround is the realization of yeah. this, and then the the R, the realignment, is the action that you take? Uh, yeah, you can actually say that because you know what's interesting with with uh, the turnaround is that the employees know that you know they're they're demoralized. You know, in other words, they like, man, our company is going down the tubes. Whereas realignment is that you have to convince them that we need to change, mm. right? So there may be in complacency. So when you look at that S curve, right, you're at that, oh, we're successful, we're doing great. And then say, you know, we really have to realign now and start thinking about changing. 
And then we can look at case studies, for example, Blockbuster, did they realign? <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, so uh, Sears, challenging with Sears or, or Borders, did they realign? Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right? So when we think about yeah. that way, challenging to convince employees and your team that, hey, we're doing great, but no, we really need to change. Mm. Well, and to your did. point, to your point, Blockbuster did not realign Netflix. Think back. Netflix right. offered DVDs by mail. That's, That's right. th That was the early business model, and they quickly realigned with that. Uh, they still continued it for those that wanted it. I, re I remember uh, I like a year ago or so, they sent out their last DVD. People were still looking for them. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some older folks that didn't adapt to to streaming, but they they quickly realigned with that. Uh, and Blockbuster was a Blockbuster. Look at how huge, mega, behemoth, mm -hmm. right down to the point where they made millions and millions of dollars selling snacks. Mm-hmm. As you check out, uh, you know, they found right. all these different ways to monetize, but they didn't realign. Right. And mm -hmm. then you can look at Nokia. I mean, so we have case studies out there. Wow. Cell phones, uh, you, you you name it. Right. So that's that realignment. The mm -hmm. turnaround one is, you know, you're you're a good company. Something happened. Now you're you know, now you really have to say, OK, we've got to bring that company back. Realignment is you're at that top of that sigmoid curve. Right. And you gotta got to convince the employees, hey, you know what we're doing, we may have to change or we may, you know, if if it doesn't work, then you're going to have to divest or or then, you know, you're on the downward slope. And then, you know, the debt cycle, uh, the last part of it, right, of the sigmoid curve. I mean, that's I wouldn't say it's a good or bad thing. It just depends. Right. If you're going to sell your company, well, then, OK, that could be part of the death curve. Right. So it's no longer gone. It's bought out from some, you know, bought out by another person. And then next thing you know, they're they're doing the realignment and the innovation and creating the next S curve. See, mm -hmm. you can apply this, though, to municipalities, cities, city governments. Right. If it's tourism, well, maybe tourism is going away and you, you got to change that model. You know, if you know, what's Long Island known for? You know, if if all of a sudden something happened, let, Grumman left a long time ago, if you remember Grumman. Aerospace right? company, right? For anybody right. that doesn't know. Mm. Right. So the thing about it in Bethpage, and so what would you do now as a as a city or as an island there, the government, the county saying, okay, we have to realign. So this is mm. the STARS framework that fits into everything, I think. Again, it doesn't matter whether you're CEO all the way down to, you know, the team lead on a team project. Mm. We're just about out of time. Uh, Got to get to the S and stars. Okay. Sustainment. Sustainment. So, you know, what's interesting, um, when they did the survey, Harvard Business Review, this is back in 2013, when Michael Watkins was writing his book, uh, they found out that the most challenging of the people who responded surveyed with using the stars model was that, uh, a whopping 33% said that it was most challenging for realignment and 22% in sustainment. Most challenging. The most preferred is startup. They would, people prefer to do 47% of those respondents said, we prefer to work in startup type climates and they don't want anything to do with sustainment, like 7%. Wow. Because it's most challenging. <sighs> And I'm guessing you don't you don't, you don't bring along the baggage either. <laughs> you know, it's, right. a, it's kind of a fresh start. Fascinating talking about all of this. And even my brain is still like swirling. To, like you mentioned, Nokia, like mm -hmm. cell phones started exploding. Nokia was there. Gone, gone. Where are they? Amazing. Right. Blackberry. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, see, these are things about your know, realignment and changing, right? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, as always, Marsh, how do we find you? How do we connect? Sure. You can give me a call. 740-217-COOL, C-O-O-L. And then uh, you can email me, mdumlau at focalpointcoaching.com. And then my website, marcialdumlau.focalpointcoaching.com. When it comes to coaching, you are a star. <laughs> Thank you. You really are. This is like fantastic stuff. I can't wait to share this with, with others in my uh, my circle. And yeah, uh, yeah. I definitely uh, took a lot away from today. Thank you for being here. 
Thank you, Steve. It's always great seeing you again and have a great weekend, Memorial Day weekend and everything and, and to your family as well. You too. And uh, right. we'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.